we're in fucking Morocco, man. Fucking Morocco. Okay, so yeah, you can tell I'm pretty excited about this trip. Let's let's backtrack a bit here. Let's start at the airport. <laughs> There are a lot of firsts between Makina and KTM. Our first international junket was with this fine company. The first one being the Duke 390 in Turin, Italy. After that, I did Canary Islands with the Scalpel Duke 790. Then, Slovenia with Mr. Rock Bogoros. Now, Morocco. Apart from it being my first time in this beautiful, exotic place, it also turned out to host my first spill in a moto feature. I mean, I fell before, yeah, but never in a moto feature. Never. So this is special. I'll get to that later on. Brief history, anything written about Morocco came out in 1000 BC. A group of people called Phoenicians from modern-day Lebanon sailed here. They started trading posts, put up ports and stuff like that. Then, in 400 BC, the Berbers showed up. War. Then, 146 BC, the Romans showed up. War. Then, 681, the Arabs started raiding the place, and they were in control by 705. Yeah. War. That's the route, basically. You can Google everything else and fast forward to 2019. I got a call from marketing maverick Anna from KTM Philippines, and she said, Zach, remember the 790 adventure you saw in ICMA a few months back? It's happening, man, in Morocco. I'm like, F yeah. Don't expect an Anthony Bourdain type of vid here. I know you're expecting Fez, Marrakesh, Casablanca. We didn't go to any of those touristy places. We went to a place called Erashidia. It's in the outskirts of the Sahara Desert. We came here to ride. Day one started with a proper breakfast, met some of the other journalists, pretty much niche guys who are into adventure riding. I'm familiar with the usual international moto media who show up in these things, but this bunch was different. These are hardcore off-road guys. This is what they specialize in. Alongside Dakar celebs, Mark Coma showed up, Chris Birch, Ken Cody, Jordan Villadoms, and Toby Price. We're talking about the who's who of KTM off-roading. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome to Morocco, I'm Luke Brackenbury, I'm the PR manager from Street Topics for KTM. Pretty windy out there, you can tell by my bad hair and this dusty bike. Just getting familiar with the bike before we, we go out today. I'll just run through it sort of top to toe. Starting from the front, 21 inch front wheel, 18 inch on the rear, LED front lights, LED lights all around. Got a windscreen adjustable in two positions, we've got a 40 mil play up and down. TFT display. Pretty much standard now on the KTM. What we got on the on the 790 Adventure, we've got a new ride mode. It's rally mode. This is standard on the R, but it's an option on 790 Adventure. And what this does, it gives you the opportunity to separate the throttle control and make the uh, traction level slip adjuster really easy. So you have, as usual, the street, rain, off-road modes as standard on this. Street is, is full power, it's, uh, you know, it's throttle response is, is, is pretty keen. Rain mode, it caps the power down to 80 horsepower, but with rally, this allows you to set your throttle response between street, rally or off-road. So rally is, is really aggressive. You can just drift, it's great. Uh, slip level three, rally mode, just third just gear, you can just feel like a hero. Quick shifter is optional on this. 20 litre tank. Fuels are held real low. Foot rests, you can take the rubbers out so you've got nice grippy metal pegs. The, the rear brake pedal, you can take it off, flip it upside down so it's in a different position for off-road riding just to suit that standing up. So pop the seat off. Dual seat on this one, the R runs a single seat. We're 830 and 850. This is on the high setting at the moment. People my height can ride the bike and there's no ground clearance issues, it's not compromised. We can go as low as 800 millimeters on seat height with a lowered seat and a lowered suspension kit. So nobody's got this. I'm getting the white one. Seat height's up, mine is up as well. This is really cool how they're able to adjust this on the fly. I'm gonna go for the highest one. Sounds good. We rode through a couple of towns, went through nice stretches and did a bit of dirt during day one. 
where with the scalpel, KTM gave us a lot of bends, twists, and track time. This year with the 790 Adventure, KTM made sure we put the bike through what it was truly intended for, an adventure out in the rough. And oh yeah, we got dirt all right. Lots of it. That's one. Is that okay? I'm good, man. Ugh. That wasn't my only fall in this trip. Yes, it looked like a feathery landing station. Didn't look scary. It's very disorienting when the ground is moving your bike while you're moving. But essentially, in this situation, throttle is your friend. Don't stop, keep on going, stand up so you can shift your weight accordingly and practice. So we have two variants, the 790 Adventure and the 790 Adventure R. The gist of things here between the two, basically the 790 Adventure is the most off-road capable street adventure bike out there. So it's primarily for the street, but amongst everybody else, it's the most off-road capable. The 790 Adventure R is the most travel capable off-road adventure bike out there. So get what I'm saying? They didn't make these two bikes and just left it at that. Yes, they specialize in two different things, but they can overlap each other in terms of function. So that's the cool thing about how they approach this project. You want to go to the street? Sure. But don't worry, the adventure can take you off-road. And for the off-road guys, sure, you want to rough it out and just, you know, break everything in front of you? Sure. But if you need to travel, this bike can do it too. The difference is the frame is pretty much the same and just like the Duke Scalpel, it, it does use the engine as a stressed element. The steering head angle 64.1 degrees for the Adventure and 63.7 for the R. See, these are the differences already. The suspension travel, 7.8 inches or 200 mm for the Adventure and 9.4 inches or 240 mm for the R version, so there's more play there. Same for the rear. Both have cornering ABS. Now between the two, I would go for the Adventure R. And before you go and say, bah, I have a Duke 790 already, I'll just change the tires and wheels and go MacGyver on it and turn it into an off-road machine. Dude, uh, you know, just spare yourself the trouble. It's just too many differences. The chassis, it's different. The suspension's different. Riding modes, the rake. It's a different bike, <laughs> basically. The only thing comparable between the Duke and this, it's the engine. KTM has come up with a lightweight ADV that is quite the machine in this segment. Fellow journalists are already calling it the best in its class. Riding these two splendid machines, I feel KTM left the manufacturing race and made their own bar. And they said, Top this, y'all. We put the bikes through the rough and gruff in Morocco. Tough roads for hours, two days. And the thing that I can't get out of my head is the suspension. A match with a lot of usable power, both for street and off-road, without lugging around too much weight. I mean, that's basically the magic of this bike. KTM also shows us in this feature how seriously they take the off-road world. I have always enjoyed the rides and the people at the forefront of the company. The KTM guys are all talented, skilled riders, and seeing all of this just gives more confidence to an already established brand. They just don't make machines, sell it, and we're done. No, the people behind it, true blue riders, know what they're talking about. They're going to be with you. They're going to be riding with you. 
the KTM 790 Adventure and 790 Adventure R. Adventure, you say? Be careful for what you ask for, because the 790 Adventure Series will deliver in spades. Good one here, KTM. Good job. And oh, another good thing? There are plans for this bike to be made in the Philippines soon. This is Zach from Makina Moto Features. Ciao. Mawawala tayo sa dilim.